Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Homeschooling with Zena. My name is Randy and I'm your host. So I'm trying to find, okay, so there we go. Output volume is a little higher. All right, so today we're going to learn about Chinese calligraphy. And I think my daughter is very good in this because she knows how to write Chinese. So let's begin. Uh, let me hold on for a minute. Okay, welcome back. Um, you, I don't know if you know, but I have a son. And if you hear him in the background, I apologize. I cannot edit him out, kind of. And... Uh, this is China, so everywhere is noisy, even the library. This is, ironically, the most quiet place of uh, Shanghai. Okay? So, yep. So, here we go. Um, yeah, so, where's the Yellow River? You know what a Yellow River is, right? We read a story about an empress of China who made a great discovery. According to the story, what fell into the empress's cup of tea? A cocoon. A cocoon. Very good. What kind of thread did she make from the cocoon? Silk. Okay. Good. When we write, we use letters like A, B, and C to make words. But other groups of people have different ways to write. What was Egyptian writing called? Hieroglyph. Very good. What was the wedge-shaped writing from Mesopotamia called? Do you remember that one? Um, cuneiform. Very good. Cuneiform. Okay. So I think I got it right. I think Zena got it right. Not I. Okay, silk cocoon, silk thread, hieroglyphs, cuneiform. We used to call it hieroglyphics when I was young. Now they call it hieroglyphs. Things change. Okay, so... These are the materials you would need for the next activity. So let's look what it looks like. Oh no, it's one of these things. Oh, okay. So practice drawing the Chinese characters for mountain, fire, and tree. So in China, this is, how do you say this in Chinese, Zina? Shan. Shan, that's mountain, and then fire. And then tree, mu. So shan, huo, mu. Right? So we are going to go back. We are going to go back. The story about the empress told us about told us how the Chinese might have discovered silk. But it didn't tell us much about the empress herself or anyone else who lived at that time. That's because in those early years of ancient China, we think no one knew how to write. So almost everything we knew about those times comes from stories passed down from person to person over thousands of years. I think only certain people knew how to write, like the princess and the emperor. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yes. So I might have to stop this lesson until that's over. It's over now. This is China. You know, it's a very dense country. So the space is very limited. So wherever you go, it's going to be quite noisy. I think uh, the noise pollution, you know, the, it's different from what you see on the internet about China, you know, you got the beautiful sea and it's so quiet. 
but in actuality, it's quite noisy, and that's because I'm in a, a urban setting. If I was in a royal place, it would be yes, like you see on the television. <laughs> okay. Um, we're not sure what parts of the stories are true or if storytellers added things to make the tales more exciting. But we do know that people of early China kept living along the Yellow and Yangtze rivers. They kept raising silkworms and growing grain and rice. Then something important happened. The Chinese started to write, but they didn't use letters as you do when you write. Instead, they drew pic pictures that stood for words. We call these pictures characters. So what does this say, Zita? Jia Ting. Jia Ting? Jia Ting. What's that? Family. Oh, Jia Ting. Family. Okay, so we're going to go to the next one. That's the great thing about having children. They become smarter than you after a while. Now, Zena, don't say anything. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Don't don't say anything. Don't say Chinese. So, can you remember what this says, audience? What this means in Chinese? We know it means mountains, but in the Chinese, what does it mean? And what does this one mean in Chinese? So, this is what Zena. San. And this is. Four. Yeah. So fire. Mountain. So this must be, if you put fire and mountain together, it must mean volcano, right? Mm -hmm. So here is a set of characters for the word mountain. Can you see the three mountains? Actually, Let's draw the characters for the word mountain. Um, actually, in this kind of it's backwards. You should put fire in front and mountain behind. Oh, so it should be Huo Shan. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Here are the characters for the word fire. Can you see the flames leaping up? That looks like a fire. Now we'll draw the characters for fire. So I guess this the three mountains, one, two, three. And this is the flames, I guess. That's how you remember it, you know. What do you think this is? Yes, it does look like a tree, right? It's a tree. Let's make the character for the word tree. And so, if this is a tree, then this should be what? Without looking at the top, this should be a forest. Right? Or the woods, because it has many trees. They, they call this word Shen. Shen. Uh -huh. Shen. Shen. So the Chinese word for forest is three trees put together like this. Let's make the characters that stand for the word forest. Actually, that doesn't really mean forest. You need Shen Ling to make a full word that means forest. Oh, so you need another character. Oh, okay. She's the expert. I think she should be teaching this lesson today. <laughs> so, at first, Chinese wrote by carving characters onto hard bone and a strong metal called bronze. But carving took a lot of time and hard work. So the Chinese decided it would be easier to paint characters. They made ink from flowers and plants, dipped pointed brushes, brushes into ink, and painted on strips of bamboo. Later, they painted on silk and paper. Yeah, we need to be really, really good at it. Yes. Because you cannot get wrong. Yeah, one you cannot wrong, make one you mistake. You go back and do it all over again. When you made Chinese characters... Did you feel like an artist? The Chinese painted words which were as beautiful as paintings. We call their writings calligraphy, which means beautiful writing. 
Let's say that word together. Calligraphy. calligraphy. Chinese calligraphy was so hard that most people did not know it. Most people in those times didn't go to school. So only a few of them knew the art of calligraphy. <coughs> wow. Yes, calligraphy. They don't go to school just like I, just like me. You are in school now. In China, calligraphy was never done quickly or carelessly. People called calligraphers spent their whole lives practicing the characters. So they spent their whole lives doing it, yes. People admired calligraphers who could make beautiful strokes when they sat down to write. Everyone knew they were going to create works of art. In calligraphy, bold strokes can make an ordinary mo mountain high and majestic. Delicate strokes make the branches of sapling tree young and tender. Quick strokes for the word fire seem to make it burn more brightly. Click start to see these strokes in action. So we're going to see that. Well, of course, it's going to be more beautiful than that. Yeah, there's a certain order you have to do it. I think it's down and then down. to the right. Yeah, down and down and then to the right. <laughs> you got to go, go always go down first when you're creating a character to the right. Up, oh, nope. That's not true. Look. This one's down and then to the right and left. I wonder what the rules are. So it was, it was, it was side, is side, down. And this one here, right, left. I mean left, right. So it was side, down, left, right. And then this one was down, right to, I mean, left to right, and then up to down. So, up to down. I think I go to the third one now, like fire. Left to right, up to down. Mm. Oh, it's tree, sorry. Dun, dun. Bang. Bang, 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 fire. It's, it's human plus two dot equals fire. Yes, that's what I thought. I thought it was like a human on fire or something. Okay, so every artist needs the right tools. The calligrapher made pointed brushes for animal hairs. First, he tied the hairs into a small bundle with a silk thread. Then he glued the bundle into the end of a small tube of bamboo. If he wanted to paint thin lines, he made his brush from tiny hairs of a mouse. To paint thicker lines, he used rabbit hair. And to paint big, broad lines, he plucked hair from a sheep or even a wolf. The calligrapher also needed an ink stone and an ink stick. These tools were works of art themselves. Both were carved into the shape of dragons, animals, or other fantastic creatures. Some ink sticks have beautiful gold designs on them, so I'm sure they would be quite expensive in these days. To begin writing, the calligrapher scraped the stone against the stick. The ink stick looked like a piece of black chalk. When black powder from the stick fell into a dish of water, the calligrapher swirled them together, and presto, he made ink. Okay. A lot of powder made the ink thick and shiny. A little powder made it light and watery. Then the callig calligrapher dipped his brush into the ink. Gently, he painted his 
first stroke onto a strip of bamboo or a piece of soft silk. He couldn't erase the ink, so every line and stroke had to be perfect. It was a hard job, and it still is. Yes, calligraphy is very, very difficult. It is not an easy job. It takes years and years to master it, you know. Years. 2,000 years. Okay. To write Chinese, you'd have to know about 2,000 characters. And just in case you want to write a lot of words, there are... Ad okay, student activity. We're going to do the student activity. Here's the student activity. All right, go ahead, Zena. Do you remember me? I'm the, I'm the Empress, Empress who discovered that, that the strands, strands from silkworm silk cocoons can be twisted into thread, and that the thread can be woven into a light, shiny cloth. My husband, the Emperor, declared that the secret for making silk cloth would remain forever with the royal family. Did it? Now you will learn how that story ends, but you will help write the ending. Click Begin to get started. Okay. Begin. You will use calligraphy to help write the ending of the story and learn what happened to the secret of making silk cloth. Remember that calligraphy is the ancient art of painting Chinese characters. Roll your cursor over each Chinese character to hear its name. Okay. Then, choose one character by clicking it. Next, click the paintbrush in the inkstone. Use your mouse to paint the character on the paper. Press and hold the left mouse button down while you move the mouse to draw a line. A lot of if you want more of a challenge and don't want to trace the character, click hide to hide the character. To erase what you painted, click erase. Are when you've gonna... finished, click done. When you're ready to move on to the next character, click next. Okay. So what do dog, you do? dog, dog, dog. Are you going to trace it or are you going to do it yourself? Okay. Did mom teach you how to do it? Wow. Are you doing it in the right order, Zena? You know what I mean? Like the strokes. Did mom teach you how to do that? No, she didn't teach me how to do my dog. She did my dog. Oh. So how to say dog in Chinese? Go. Be so very careful. You gotta do it carefully. Yeah, Zena, you definitely um doing hide it show hide. You definitely do the doing the strokes in the wrong order. Hide, hide. Done. Next. Good job. Now click the character for day or night and repeat the same steps. Night. Wow, night is very complicated. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. You see that? Like, you make a mistake, and then the mistake is there forever. You can't erase it. So. Well, you, or she's also using a mouse. So she's using a mouse, and the mouse is on a bed. So you can't <laughs> expect much. It's not bad. Hide, show, hide. She's only eight. 
Hide. Done. Done. Next. You're doing a how, great how job. Say night in Chinese. Now choose forest One. or mountain. One. Forest. Mountain. Hide. So forest is what? In Chinese? Shen. Shen. Shenling. But this is only Shen. Forest. Hide. Hide. Show. Oh, hide. The third tree. What happened to it? The second one. This one? Yeah, what happened to its arm? To the branches. Yeah. Done. Done. Next. 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 You're almost done. Choose a number and paint the character. Six. 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 How to say six? Hide. Neil. Show. Neil. And two is R. And hey. nine D is erase. Erase is Joe. Oh, he, she's gonna try without. Show. Hide. Yeah. Hi. Show. 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 Hide. Try again. Hide. Erase. Hide. Done. Hi. Show. Okay, that's all right. Show. Hide. It's big enough for the sound of lies. Done. Next. Here's the last one. You know, you would make a fine calligrapher. Child. How to say woman? Hide. Show. Yeah. Yeah. And how to say child yeah. in Chinese? And daddy is so high, but she's man. Now be small. And what about man? Man. Mm -hmm. How to say that in Chinese? Man. Man. Oh. So it's new, shao, nan. And she's right about child. That's kind of wrong for child. It should be, because that just means shao, it means small. It doesn't really mean child. child Show. Shall hide. Right? Yeah. Hide. Show. Show. Hide. Done. Neck. Next. Very, very good. And now, here is the ending to the story of The Secret of Making Silk, the ending you helped write. Once the Empress had presented the silk robe to the Emperor, the Emperor knew that the secret for making the marvelous silk cloth must never leave the palace. The instructions for making silk cloth were written down and guarded day and night by the royal dog. Next. <laughs> A dragon living nearby 
heard rumors about a wonderful new cloth that shone like melted silver. He learned that the instructions for making the cloth were guarded day and night in the royal palace. One night the dragon broke into the palace, took the instructions, and returned to his cave in the forest. Although the dragon was clever, he was not able to read the instructions. Next. Six days later, a child happened to be walking near the dragon's cave. The dragon captured the child and made her read the instructions aloud. Then he let the child go, but the dragon had been tricked. Instead of reading the secret instructions, the child had told the dragon how to make burlap, a coarse cloth used to make bags. <laughs> Next, the child who had tricked the dragon, having read the instructions for making silk, now knew the secret. Soon the secret was out, and before long anyone could make silk cloth. Silk and robes made from silk were no longer just for emperors and empresses. Okay, there we go. That was very interesting. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. Review the information. Oh, it says, what is calligraphy? Zena? It's kind of writing. Okay, but... It's kind of tiny writing. What does callig calligraphy mean? Calligraphy. It's called beautiful... Beautiful writing. Yeah, beautiful writing. And what is a calligrapher? A person who writes calligraphy. Uh, someone who writes with beautiful... Word um, pictures. Word pictures. Calligraphy is beautiful handwriting or artistic handwriting. They drew pictures called characters that stood for words. Oh, I didn't read the first one here. Okay, it's something talented calligraphers. We can check. Check. Uh, <laughs> So small, we didn't even get a chance to see. Yeah, that takes a lot of work, I tell you. A lot of work. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and uh, please join us again please like and subscribe we only have 51 subscribers and those are not subscribers related to this but related to something else i did which was collecting gold and silver so in actuality we have like two subscribers that actually subscribe to this channel so um yeah please like and follow Goodbye.